In 2010, an animated movie about a supervillain voiced by Steve Carell was released. No, no, no. I said dart gun. In that movie, there were these yellow tic tac things called minions. And they spoke in like funny sounds or something. <laughs> Bada bada da bada? What do you really? I've never seen the movie. I thought they spoke gibberish. Well, they speak a blend of pigeon languages mixed with gibberish, but bada bada bada, that's almost racist. 2010 was also the year that everybody's parents found out about Facebook. So as a result, through some cosmic mystery we'll never understand, Facebook memes started popping up with these pictures of these things next to quotes that they couldn't or, or wouldn't say, even if they could say it. Do people enjoy them? Are they being forced to share them? Who was the first person to do this? And, and have they been convicted of war crimes yet? And is Baby Yoda considered a minion now? But way worse than the minion meme, way worse than the Baby Yoda meme, has to be passive-aggressive Christian Facebook memes. Like this one posted by someone who's obviously tired of people being mad at them for being judgmental. Or this one posted by someone who was upset about capitalization. Most of the time these are posted for someone specific. They don't want to argue with them, so they post a vague meme. Like this one that I'm pretty sure was aimed at my friend by her mother because she started going to a progressive church that accepted gay people. Uh, you see, you see what's going on here is the one preacher is preaching the actual stuff that the Bible teaches, while the other one is telling you to be a good person. Boo! I have someone in my life who I do love dearly, who I'm pretty sure used to regularly meme at me. It was usually shared after I posted something about a church leader who hurt people, or church abuse, or how someone in a church treated myself, or a friend of mine. And then something like this would pop up. That's right, the issue isn't that I or other people were hurt. The issue is that I was doing faith wrong. Thanks for watching and liking and subscribing, and thanks so much to the patrons. You have all been so wonderful and fantastic. If you want to join us there, I put the link below. Just a little warning for you. This one alludes to or talks about abuse by church leaders in many different forms. So if that's going to be a rough one for you, it's okay if you just meet us at the next one. This is by far the most common argument I've heard. Sometimes by well-meaning people trying to figure out why I left, and sometimes as a smug gotcha. But it usually goes something like this. Study God's Word. Don't follow pastors, preachers. Follow God and Him alone. So when it comes to the moral failings of these Christian leaders, it's actually the failure of these teachers that help to remind us where our attention should be when it comes to salvation. It shouldn't be men because it's not the moral lives that they live that save us, but instead it should be on Christ since His moral life is the one that saves us. So ironically, the fact that Christian leaders can and do fall really just seems to emphasize the main point of the Bible. The main point of the Bible is not that we're good enough to save ourselves, but it's a reminder that every time that we think we are, we realize that we're not. You liked a pastor, enjoyed their sermons, felt closer to God when they spoke, then the pastor does something bad. <laughs> well, you shouldn't have liked that pastor so much. Few of the things that I have had happen to me at the hands of church leaders, but my friend, my faith and trust was not in a person. It is in the person of Jesus Christ, because every single time that you put your faith and trust in a leader or a person in the church, they are prone to let you down and disappoint you. So do not let your disappointment with a church or a church leader cause you to stray away from the faith. Okay, this is, um, all right, this is silly. Nope, 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 nope. And like I said, it can get accusatory. The reason you're not a Christian is not because of something somebody else is doing. That's just an excuse. The reason that you're not a Christian is because you don't want to submit to God. <laughs> His brain is wrong. <laughs> and they say things like, well, if this is what's going on in the Catholic Church, I just need to get out of here. I need to find someplace else to go. And I'm sympathetic to that to a point because I understand what it feels like to be disappointed at times. But here's what I want to tell you. It's a bad idea, no matter what, to leave the Catholic Church. You see, it doesn't matter what someone else did. Your relationship is with God and not with a church leader. It's just that we're all flawed people. And he says, look at your own heart. You're made of the same stuff. It's human nature. It's not just... It's not that pastors are all frauds, but human beings uh, are capable of this. What can you possibly say to us that'll make up for your actions? 
Poe buddy's nerfect? This is true. We are all flawed people. There are so many things I have regretted doing or saying, and some of it is probably on video. But just admitting you're flawed means nothing to the people you hurt without action. And every one of us is going to fall short. And every one of us have had moments of hypocrisy, myself included. Every one of us have said things we wish we had not said. We've done things we wish we had not done. Nobody's perfect. <laughs> That's hilarious. Like nobody's perfect with the letter switch. That's very funny. It's perfect. <laughs> and of course, there's the classic King David and other Bible people were bad too, so... Let me explain this to you in another way. David, he fell into sin, right? But does that mean that we should not read all his psalms? God using people who sin and sin hard shouldn't actually be very shocking to us because the Bible describes this. If God could use David and Noah, Jonah, Peter, Paul, Thomas, and the rest of them, then he can use people who sin. This kind of thinking has been used way too often to justify awful people continuing or gaining positions of power. And of course there is the argument that just because the people who teach something are bad doesn't mean the thing they are teaching is wrong. Is the Bible's message false because people who claim to believe it may be hypocrites? And when you think about it, you realize, no, if truth exists, then the truth is still the truth, regardless of what kind of people believe it or whether anyone believes it at all. It's too bad that people experience that. Christians aren't perfect. Um, the church is a place for imperfect people who are forgiven by a savior. But does that episode in your life disprove the resurrection of Jesus? Well, no, it has nothing to do with the resurrection of Jesus. I mean, that is true. My French teacher used to pinch the back of my neck when I acted up in class. That doesn't mean what she taught me about French was wrong. I mean, it was wrong, and they fired her for that and the, and the pinching. But, like, French is still real. But that's the thing. She was held accountable, even though she was just a flawed person. And I still cannot speak French. I don't know if that's my fault. Or... Focus on the message and not so much the messenger. Because the messenger is not perfect. Just like all of us, they are flawed. But God is not flawed. God is perfect and His Word is perfect. So you can trust it. This is like the Jesus version of that uh, separate the art from the artist thing. So the message isn't changed by the person telling it. Everyone makes mistakes. That's why there's a backspace on a keyboard. And Moses was bad too, so, so now what? What do you mean? We solved it. You keep going to church. I think some people that have been hurt use their pain as justification for hatred, which isn't right. Um, Jesus was hurt. Isaiah 53 tells us he was hurt. You know what I'm saying? Like he was disrespected, but he chose to love us and still chooses to love us. So I think that's our challenge um, as believers who have been hurt is I choose to love the church of God, despite their flaws, um, because Jesus loves me. Take a look at yourself. You know, we, we should not have an attitude of, well, I would never do that. You know, we, we do that. We look, well, man, I would never do that. Yeah. Well, you might not only do that, but you might do something worse because you don't know what that person's going through. Right. And so don't leave church because you got hurt. You don't know me. Nice, Mrs. Pancakes. Real nice. So we must always remember that even though we were hurt by a church, it very well may not have been their intent to do so. I mean, obviously they're just talking about like if a pastor was rude to you or something, right? I don't care if people did you and hit you in the church. That's real church hurt, right? That's pretty disgusting. But even then still, when you stand before the Lord and he says, why weren't you living right? Why didn't you have a relationship with me? Why you turned your back on the church? Why you turned your back on Christianity? You're not going to be able to blame anybody or anyone. Why? Because the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead is living in you. <laughs> oh, wow. Cool God alert. It doesn't matter what horrors you've been through at the hands of church leaders or members. It still comes down to you, and it's your fault if you lose your faith. It's your fault if you burn in hell for eternity. But then what does that mean for Christianity? It means it's true, obviously. When we criticize someone for being hypocritical, we're making a moral judgment. And for a moral judgment to mean anything, morals must exist in the first place. When you say that, you know, the church is full of hypocrites, in other words, they're not living up to the standard that they profess, you're assuming there's a standard. 
that there's a standard by which people are supposed to live up to, right? Great statement. So um, in making the the, uh, objection of hypocrisy, uh, you also need to ground, well, what is that standard that you think of goodness? What is the standard of goodness that you're expecting people to live up to? You keep using the word. I don't think it means what you think it means. Hypocrisy is when you go against your own standards. Like if you say that wearing a blue shirt is evil and wrong and anyone who wears a blue shirt deserves to be pancaked by a dump truck and then you wear a blue shirt to the store, that makes you a hypocrite. But it doesn't mean you are right about the shirt and the dump truck thing. If Christianity is false, why would we expect people who are preoccupied with a misleading fairy tale to behave better than people in secular society? You'd think that if, if this whole thing was grounded on something that was false, they would actually behave worse than people in secular society. Ooh, self-burn. Those are rare. You probably shouldn't say that if it was false, you would behave worse than the secular society while trying to defend the Catholic Church. On the second day of testimony, Australia's highest ranking Catholic denies knowledge of sexual abuse by Australian priests. I couldn't say that I ever knew that everyone knew. Um, I knew a number of people did. Uh, I was a, I didn't know whether it was common knowledge or uh, whether it uh, wasn't. It's a sad story and it wasn't of much interest to me. There are hypocrites in the church and I am one of them. There are hypocrites everywhere else as well. The difference is that Christians recognize their hypocrisy and go to seek a remedy for it. Do do they? The Catholic Conference, headed by Timothy Cardinal Dolan, spent more than $2.1 million from 2007 through the end of 2015 to lobby against the Child Victims Act. The conference in Chicago for U.S. bishops starts today, just as the Vatican blocked them from addressing the sex abuse crisis. I don't even know what you, I mean, we did maybe two jokes about that. Yeah, exactly. Don't you think the Catholic Church went a little too far? (laughs) More so than my cartoon. All right, listen. Where are you going to go, friend? If you're going to leave the Catholic Church and you're going to walk away from Jesus Christ in the Eucharist, where, where else can you go? So that's basically what an abusive partner would say, right? What are you gonna do without me? How can you live without me? You need me. Okay. All right, that's it. Okay. You're gonna go someplace else where, you know, they believe it's just a symbol or they believe that it's just a memorial? You're telling me that you believe that Christ comes back to life every Sunday in the form of a bowl of crackers and then you proceed to just eat the man. Correct, you consumed a corpse and you drank his blood. That's good, 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 good. This is what we're dealing with. Or whatever, are you willing to do that? Are you willing to leave Jesus, over these petty reasons? Uh, dot, 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 yes. The U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops says the social and sexual changes in the 1960s provoked the sex abuse scandal in the Catholic Church, not homosexuality, celibacy, or an all-male priesthood. But the organization acknowledges it didn't do enough to stop the abuse. I know, I know, you're not Catholic. Your church is different. Well, the true church is not populated by hypocrites. The local church, the local denomination, or some religious institution, that might be the case. So first I would say, I would counter with that thought, what you're calling the church isn't the true church. 20 years and 700 victims. That is just part of the shocking revelations contained in a joint investigation by the Houston Chronicle and the San Antonio Express News into sexual abuse, assault, and cover-up within the Southern Baptist Church. Lancaster County, a church bishop is charged with failure to report suspected child abuse to police. 63-year-old Levi Esch Sr. served as bishop of two Amish churches. From the 1940s up until 2018, 390 people in the church have been convicted of sexual offenses against children. The case hinges on letters from Jehovah's Witness leaders to the heads of local congregations. For almost 20 years, they've ordered them to send reports like this one for every known child abuser to hide these cases from their congregations and not to cooperate with law enforcement or the courts unless instructed to. Most often the victim is innocent because of being disabled by fear or the power or authority of the offender. At some point in time, however, the Lord may prompt a victim to recognize a degree of responsibility for abuse. 
The Methodist Church has apologized after an investigation it commissioned found nearly 2,000 claims of sexual, physical or emotional abuse. Allegations date back as far as the 1950s. So a few things are going to happen as a result of those clips I just showed. Someone will point out that some of those clips are from what they deem to be cults or false religions. Someone will point out that the church they attend wasn't mentioned. Someone will accuse me of cherry picking. And of course they will say I used too many clips and should get to the point quicker. The thing is, I could have used so many more. That if any religion or denomination or cult or whatever end up being right, the God of that group has to explain why he sat back and did nothing. So yes, I'm upset with people. I was taught to put my trust in Christian leaders. And no, it doesn't mean that I never had trust in God. I trusted him so deeply. You don't get to tell me what I believed and where my faith was. Now you're asking me to mask my emotions because of how it makes you feel? That I will not do. When I stand back and look at all the awful things people have done in the name of God, by people who were supposed to represent him, it can seem like he's either ignoring the problem, can't do anything about it, or just isn't there. Why you always gotta be so mean to me? So I'm gonna ask you this. Until churches start going to the police more instead of hiding abuse under the rug, when pastors stop being corrupted by their power, when families aren't encouraged to disown their children based on who they are, when church leaders are quicker to say, I'm sorry, than they are to say, it's your fault, maybe then you can start using those passive aggressive memes again. But until then, just stick to the minions. Banana, banana, beep boop, bop, bop, boop. I'm getting divorced. Oh. Thanks for listening, if you made it that far. I really appreciate it. If you know someone who might benefit from this, send it their way. But either way, thank you so much for all your support, and, and I really appreciate it. Work, 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 Sky Moon. <laughs>